Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, welcome to another episode of Books and Buds. We discuss two of the greatest things on planet Earth, Books and Buds. I kind of got kicked out of the studio because our company's been doing really well and we needed more space to grow. So the studio got uh, was torn down and we are in the process of hopefully putting up another one so I can have the cool burning bush uh, banner behind me. But whatever, I'm making do with what I have. And there'll be plenty of cannabis to show you folks soon. I'm just out of the office right now because there's no longer space to record there. But for the time being, we can still discuss books. And that's what brings us to today's book. My good friend, um, Maria Jesus, uh, Jesus Estrada, she did this book in one of her reaction videos, one of, one of her book review videos. And I'm going to leave a link to that channel because she was kind enough to mention me in it. And I had, I had forgotten that I even wrote a story for this book. And... I was kind of tickled by her review, so I figured I'd I'd give her a little shout out, leave a link for her channel, and I'll also be leaving a link to where you can find a copy of this book. Before I get into my little review of it, though, I'd like to also mention that my very first debut novella, titled Yesterday's Wounds, is currently available for pre-order. It's going to be in a box set with 26 other authors. It's a romance box set, but 26 little books, novellas, and nov novelettes. All for 99 cents, so that's less than 5 cents a book, everybody. So I hope you click that link, and I hope you pre-order your copy now. There will be links to Nook, Apple, and Amazon, so I really appreciate it if you have a look at it. Give us a little bit of help. We're trying to boost each other and get our names out there before our actual novels come out. Also, bear in mind, Corpse Lily's coming out this fall for pre-order. I hope you guys check that one out, too. Really proud of it. I've worked hard on her, and I think she's a good book. So, back to Flashpoint. Now, I wanted to review this one because I had forgotten all about it. I didn't even remember that I was in it until she pointed it out and she did a review and I was like, oh yeah. And she was kind enough to say that my story was her favorite in the book. So mine is titled Sober. It's the very first story in there. and You know, I was shocked to see that it was the first story in there and I was shocked to see that anybody thought it was their favorite story because there's a lot of wonderful ones in here. Now, I read through it again. And what happened was I had highlighted a bunch of the stories, and I was, and um, I went back through and read all those ones again, and I read back through a few other ones that I had forgotten about too, because there are some people that I'd become friends with on social media since this book was released. And I wanted to give them a quick shout out as we go through this, but first we'll start with one of the ones that I highlighted because I enjoyed it so much. It's titled "Just a Waitress." Now keep in mind this is a flash fiction anthology, so it means these stories are about. 2,000 words or less. Very, very short stories. So Just a Waitress, it was just a wonderful story about this woman. Now, I love my literary fiction. So this woman just started off as a waitress, just going through the ranks just like anyone else of us working class stiffs, getting her butt pinched by some pesky men sometimes and uh, getting told off by her bosses, having to put some people in their place when she probably shouldn't have, just working her way up the ranks. But she ended up... Uh, Falling in love with this young man, he shared the same vision as her. He was the cook, she was the waitress in this one particular restaurant. Worked their way up the ranks, bought their own restaurant, which led to the purchase of another restaurant, which led to the purchase of some hotel chains and some golf courses. And that's how she starts, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I like stories like that, because they give you a little bit of motivation. They give you that little boost. You know, hey, this person did it, I can do it too. I know it's just fiction, but those stories do happen. And um, I've seen it happen a little bit in my life, too. You stick to something, you will get it. So that's why I liked that story quite a bit. I thought it was really well written, and I thought it had a great point. So that brings us off to Lift Off by Steve Carr. Now, Steve Carr, he is one of the first writers that uh, we both touched base around the same time we started um, connecting and networking with other writers. So I'm really fond of Steve for that alone, and I've watched him since then. He released his like first short story like back then in 2016 when we first started talking. And since then, he's had over 350 short stories he's published. And online magazines, collections like this one, uh, print magazines, you name it, he's in it. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I've read all 350 of his stories. But I've read quite a bit of them. Not all of them are exactly my cup of tea. But they're all written well enough where I can get from one end to the other and feel very satisfied when I'm done. I'd say probably close to 50% of his stories I'm really taken back by. I really just love them. And this was one of my favorites. I just absolutely loved it. It's called Liftoff. 
and it's just about this family. You know, it's kind of a dystopian little story. The world's coming to an end, and to make their little boy feel good, they um, tell him that their little spaceship's about to take off, you know, and they're going and hiding in their pretend spaceship, and they close their eyes, they count down, lift off. <laughs> so it was pretty cute. It was tragic. It was sad, but at the same time, it was very special and sweet. I really like that, and Steve has a good way of finishing up a lot of his stories that way, making you feel kind of bittersweet at the end. And I like that. Being a huge Steinbeck, John Steinbeck fan, I love those kinds of endings. So good job, Steve Carr. Hope you're watching this, buddy. I really like you. And uh, I'm reading your book, Redbird, right now. Um, I'm just finishing up on uh, a friend of mine, uh, her book right now. I promised her I would do it. I'm going to leave her review on Amazon. I will finish your, bird red, your book, Redbird, and do the same thing for you, my friend, as I like it so far. I really do. So that brings us to Sunday by Samantha Hamilton. And this was another one of those bittersweet ones. It just left me like, oh, how nice, you know. Just about this woman. Her husband's a huge Chicago Bears fan. 20 years she's been sitting there watching every single game with him. And this year they're in the playoffs, you know. And he could be going to his buddy Dave's house and watching it with him. But he wants to watch it with his wife. She don't like watching football. <laughs> she don't like it at all. But towards the end of this little story here, I don't want to give it away. You know, we find out why he doesn't want to go over there. And it's one of those sweet, touching little, sweet, touching little tales that I just, I was very touched by. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that one. So Sunday by Samantha Hamilton. She's one of the writers I have not connected with on social media. And I hope I do uh, connect with her because she was really good. Oh, I should also mention Just the Waitress by Val Portelli. I haven't connected with her either, but but with her writing, I can, I can tell she's going to go some places. Brianna M. Fenty wrote another one. It's called OK. Now, this was just one of those stories that it was beautiful. It had one of those bittersweet endings that I'm talking about. I'm sure you're starting to see a pattern here. I'm a huge John Steinbeck fan. I love literary fiction. I love bittersweet endings. That's just the way I am. So please don't hold that against me if that's not your cup of tea. And you read something else in here and you're like, that was way better than OK by Brianna M. Fenty. Or Stephen Carr doesn't hold a candle to this Sam M. Phillips story. Everyone's got their own taste. And... Literary fiction is mine. And that's exactly what, exactly what OK is. It's, it's literary fiction. Brianna M. Fenty did a wonderful job at describing the scene, and it was just beautiful. I saw everything in my head, and I really felt it when that last sentence dropped. It was just beautiful. Because bear in mind, this is flash fiction. It's got to be done short. So these are just real quick, quick, quick. And you know, typically in flash fiction stories, it's that very, very last sentence that really nails the rest of the story home. And Brianna Fenty, uh, M. Fenty was one of these writers that just nailed it. Pam Van Allen. Now, her and I are also connected on, on the social pages, you know, and we like each other very much. We seem to, you know, we seem to. And uh, we don't know each other beyond Instagram, beyond Facebook, but she seems the kind of person that I would actually enjoy hanging out with in person, having a cup of coffee with. And her writing is just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And I think that's... You know, I hate to put people on a pedestal that I've never met because that's just the way it is. Sometimes you're disappointed. But when I read beautiful writing like this, I, I just like I love to see this person in person and see what kind of an individual this really is, you know. And it was just such a great story about this guy in the Vietnam War who ends up adopting a nice young girl he finds in the woods. He just his heart goes out to her. His his uh, superior officer pulls some strings with his congressman, and he's able to adopt her. And he brings the war home with him, but, you know, at least he brings a good reason to have been to war home. So that brings us to A Flicker of Time by R.A. Goley. Now, as I had mentioned several times during this little video, I'm a huge fan of literary fiction. A Flicker of Time by R.A. Goley was not literary fiction. It was quite fantastical. It actually reminded me a little bit of Lovecraft, maybe some Edgar Allan Poe, because it's this guy who works as a candle maker for death. He works in this candle factory, and he, he makes these candles, and he fills up like there's miles and miles and miles of underground tunnels just filled with lit candles. So he's the mold maker. He's making the candles, and he's got to make them to specific sizes for death. So when death lights it, that's the birth of the individual on the earth plane. So this guy's watching the candles go down and down and down. He knows when people are going to die. He knows where they're going to live. He's immortal himself. So when he gets a candle for his newborn son, 
the story takes a quick turn for the worst. And I don't want to give away too much more than that, but it was beautifully done. Great story. Great story by Ari Goli. Now I'm going to finish this off with Busted by uh, Tim Jokel. It was the last story in here, and I, I, I can kind of see why Grant Hudson, he's the editor-in-chief of Clarendon House Publishing, I can kind of see why he wanted to leave this as the last story because it was one of those things where you don't want to leave off a collection with, with a with a mediocre story. Now, this story was very clever. It had one of those last sentence, like, oh, I see where it all wrapped up. And, it, it, again, it was just it's about this woman that works at Blockbuster Video and someone's been recording some, some nasty pornography at the end of the uh, – VHS tapes before returning them, and obviously the store has been getting some complaints, and uh, it just leads up to that last scene where it's it's kind of funny, it's kind of disturbing, but it left you kind of feeling pretty good when the book was all done, and I put this, this book down feeling very happy, very satisfied. Now, I wanted to mention a couple um, honorable mentions in this book. Now, I'm probably going to hammer some of these names, so I really apologize. If, if that happens, but uh, Narisha Kamraj, uh, she wrote this wonderful story called The Irony of Happiness, or Irony of Happiness, and it was one of these stories where this guy was just, you know, he was his own worst enemy. He had true love right in front of him the whole time, and was too blind and stupid, with his negative personality mindset to even see it. So she wrapped that story up nicely, and I wanted to throw her a little bit of love. I also wanted to throw a little bit of love to P.A. O'Neill. She had this wonderful story of, uh, titled No Good Deed, and it's a it's about this guardian angel. It's just, <laughs> it was really quick. It was less than a page. It's, it seems like they're just sick at their job. <laughs> and it was cute just to listen to this guardian angel just grumbling away about how much he hated his job. I also wanted to make um, a mention to R.L.M. Cooper. I like R.L.M. Cooper. I've read a lot of her work before. This one didn't really jump out to me just before Dark as much as some of her other stories have because I've read her in many other collections, and she's just a wonderful, wonderful writer. Uh, the other one that I wanted to make mention of is Pulling Strings by Brandy Boniface, also a fantastic writer. She's got a YouTube channel, too, that I think you should check out. I'll see if I can find it. I, I've subscribed to it, so I'll try to leave a link to Brandy as well. And also Sam Phillips. I like Sam a lot. This story wasn't one of his better ones, but he's an amazing, amazing science fiction, horror, fantasy writer. He runs the gamut in the genre fiction, really, of the darker side of the genre fiction, and he's just a good writer. So I want to give him a quick shout-out, too. So this video ran a little longer than I intended it to, but I really appreciate you guys for sticking it out. Again, please uh, consider throwing 99 cents at 26 authors in a, books, in a box set coming out. If you're a romance fan, especially a contemporary romance fan, it's just for you. All right, check out the links in the description below. You could have tuned into any book review channel, but for some reason you popped in on mine. I love you guys for it. We'll check you later. Have an awesome day.